Hey everybody. Hey, we're going to make a Kestrel home today, a Kestrel nesting box. A Kestrel nesting box will also work for a screech owl. And this is what a Kestrel looks like. Uh, this poor guy was hit on the road. We took it to a taxidermist and had it stuffed. This is a male Kestrel. There are, by estimate, about 9 or 10 million uh, Kestrels globally. That sounds like a lot, but that's a decrease of about 50% since uh, the 60s and that's mainly due to habitat loss. This is a uh, cavity nester which means it needs an old hollow tree to make a nest uh, and a lot of dead old trees are removed um, in the practice of neat and clean uh, farming. Uh, so if you can leave standing dead wood then do that. It helps woodpeckers, it helps cavity nesters like owls and kestrels um, you can get plans for this box uh, all over the internet. This one comes from a Facebook group that I follow, and that is Canadian Raptor Conservancy, so shout out to them. Uh, check them out on Facebook. There's also a lot of other plans online. Uh, here are some simple tips for you for a nesting box for a screech owl or a kestrel. Uh, this is made from 1x10 pine. You can also use 1x12. To make a little bigger box it has to be at least 10 inches wide um, and 10 inches thick that way for out from the tree or barn uh, it should be about 14 inches tall or more the opening has to be at least three inches in diameter about three inch diameter seems to work for these birds uh, no perch is needed don't add a perch <laughs> yeah you can use a tape it's actually this exact same size thank you as a tape roll so that's what we use to trace out that hole uh, you'll need some basic tools of course for this chop saw table saw uh, um, a miter saw works well uh, and a jigsaw for cutting the hole um, a couple of important things to include in your box the base is slightly recessed to prevent water from coming in uh, underneath it's also got some drain holes one in each corner in case water does get in it can get out easily on the bottom now the top should be sloped and it should overhang just like a house does so that you don't get storm water coming in the top. You need a little bit of ventilation. So just like a regular house would, uh, when it heats up in the sun, there should be some ventilation holes and that lid doesn't have to uh, seal on there perfectly as long as you have an overhang. Uh, water shouldn't get in and you get a little bit of hot air coming out the top. Uh, I use galvanized screws so they don't rust and we've got some good four inch galvanized screws on the top here ready to mount into a barn or, uh, or a tree if we can find a suitable place for it. These should be mounted facing south or east uh, in front of an open field and we are looking for volunteers uh, who uh, want to have these boxes on their farm. Uh, so send me a message if you want this, uh, we'll give it to you free. We have three of them available. Uh, as long as we can see it from the road, we would love to see if Kestrels actually nest uh, in there this year or next. Uh, last note to mention is uh, it's great if your box can open in some way. So the top or the side, if you can get access to clean it out each year, then you'll have more success having F Kestrel families uh, nest. A uh, kestrel is a bird of prey, uh, that means that it hunts, it hunts mice or snakes, uh, grasshoppers, even dragonflies, and uh, it needs to uh, sit on top of a perch and see a wide open field, so that's the best place for these boxes, about 10, uh, at least 10 feet high, preferably higher, uh, on a, a lone tree in a field. Uh, or uh, side of a barn that's really high. So let me know if you want one of these boxes and we'll come out and put it up for you or you can do that uh, yourself.